Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today a snake puzzle which I will get to soon. Um, now first of all I do want to say a very happy birthday to uh, to Tony from Emma Halshaw. Tony you're turning 30, that is a very special birthday. I'm delighted that uh, you might have some interest in us acknowledging it and uh, very happy to shout it out. I hope you get a lot of cake and uh, have a great birthday. And also, another special birthday. I think the rule is any birthday is special if it ends in a zero. So Ty, Charlotte Rasmussen says, you are turning 20 today. And again, I wish you loads of cake, a very happy birthday, many happy returns of the day, long into the future. Um, and that's not all, I've got another one. Scott Williams, happy birthday to you. Uh, your mother, Emily, comments regularly we was mentioned in the video this week and uh, I mean gave us a puzzle to solve maybe it was over a week ago actually that was the one from the world from the uh, Sudoku Grand Prix but Scott like Emily is a patron solves the puzzles regularly is he is also a math or maths teacher Emily gave us both options and it's his birthday today so very happy birthday to all of you hope you'll get a ridiculous amount of cake Maybe you'll be lucky enough to get some of our birthday birthday merchandise, which uh, like the mug, which features a Sudoku puzzle that just happens to say "Happy Birthday" as part of the as part of the setup, and features a cake on top of the grid. Uh, anyway, you could find that merchandise. You could find all our apps, which are also great presents. You could find the Patreon site, where you have less than a day left to send in the entry to the genuinely approachable Sudoku puzzle competition and the Discord server all on the links under the video. But the first one is to is to this video called Pierced uh, to this puzzle called Pierced Snake. Uh, and you can play it in our software. It is by Andreas V. Now Simon very recently asked me um, should we should we be inviting everybody who's been featured on the channel five times or more to contribute to the 500k app. Um, it would be enormous if we did because it turns out there's over 100 people who've been featured five times or more, which I mentioned because today Andreas joins that club. This is uh, the fifth time we've featured a puzzle of his. I think he was responsible for both the wedged sum puzzles, which were which I did and which were very entertaining. Um, so today the puzzle is a snake puzzle. These terrify me. They, a snake always brings a certain amount of chaotic energy to a puzzle. Um, it's a bit like a chaos construction, I suppose, but you have to identify this one cell wide snake in the grid as well as following all the rules. So let's, let's have a look at this. Do try it on the link under the video. Um, I'm a little scared of it, but you'll be able to tell from the video length whether it really is hard. And the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That's one to nine in every row, column and box, of course. Digits along an arrow must sum to the number in the circle. So far, so normal. So those three digits add up to the number there. There is one one cell wide snake with a head and a tail, handy for a snake, that enters each box exactly once. Okay, so the snake goes through every box in the grid. That's these three by three areas. We're calling them boxes. It may not touch itself, not even diagonally. So this is not a legal path for the snake to take because it would be a naughty snake touching itself diagonally. Ah, the number in any circle indicates how many cells, that's why we've got a circle with no arrow, indicates how many cells the snake occupies in that box. Okay, so if we had a five here, the snake would be occupying five cells in that box. Maybe those five, maybe another five. The first two digits on the arrow, as read from the circle, give a two digit number showing the sum of the snake's cells in the circle's box. Okay, so this five could be made up of two, three on the arrow. And if that was the case, then the five cells in this in this box that have the snake on it, we know it's five because it's in the circle, would add up to 25. So for instance, that could be, if it was those five, 
this might be a 9, 9, 11, 16. These would add up to 7. They would be maybe 1 and 6. So that is a possible conformation using that arrow and the rule set. Wow. So these arrow circle things are doing triple duty. They're, they're arrows in the normal sense that those two add up to that. Then the circle is telling us how many snake cells are in its box. And then the first two cells of the arrow are telling us what those add up to. Wow, okay. So this might explain why there's so little information in this terrifying grid. Two given digits and a very few number of arrows. So up here, we've got one arrow going up there and one arrow going up there. Oh, they're going to have the same two digit number. Oh, that's interesting. That Oh yeah, I was going to say that doesn't necessarily mean these two are the same, but it does. Anyway, let's not do the deductions now. Let's do them when I start and I might as well might as well have a crack at this monster now. Let's get cracking. So, how the heck do we begin with so little info? Right. What I would normally do in an arrow puzzle is mark these three circles as six, seven, eight, or nine. That is because the three digits on each of those arrows see each other. So they all have to be different. And the minimum you can get is six, one plus two plus three. This can't be an eight because of Sudoku rules. Oh, but remember, right, these circles are counting the number of snake cells in the box. Well, that can never be nine because that naughty snake would be touching itself all over. I have a feeling these are all going to be sixes, which is very helpful. Um, you couldn't ever have eight, because even if you left the middle cell blank, the snake would come and touch itself. Oh, maybe you could have seven. That would be seven. Yeah, I think... You can't have nine or eight in these cells. I'm going with that. You can't. There's no way to have an eight cell, eight cells of the grid occupied by a snake. So these are all six or seven. Now they can be seven. Ah, but the arrows for six or seven are made up of either one, two, three or one, two, four. Oh, that gives us a one, two, three, four quad, which is useless. Ah, but the one and the two in this quad are on this arrow because this is either six or seven. So that is not one or two. Oh, so that's the big number on this arrow. So these two are the one and two here. Um, oh, and these are different. They're not both the same. So one is seven and one is six. They're different because this digit can't appear on this arrow. And therefore one of these is one, two, three, and the other is one, two, four. Ah, and there's this third rule. Right, the first two digits on the arrow, as read from the circle, give a two-digit number showing the sum of the snake cells. Okay, it's a complicated read, but it's a fairly simple idea. And, and this is vital here. Look, this is either six or seven cells in here. Now, it doesn't really matter where those six or seven cells are. They could be there. What I'm interested in there is that they all have to be different numbers. And the minimum total you can add up six digits to that are all different is 21. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. So this can't be a one. That is a two. There's a number in the grid. It's either 23 or 24. This, oh, so this is the six. It can't be seven. Yes, it can't be seven because the minimum total for seven cells is 28. I know my triangular number's up to nine anyway. So that's a six. That makes this a three. Now there's no three here. That's one, two, four. And that makes this a seven. And what's the, the total of seven cells can't have a one. And 28's impossible starting with a two or 29. So that's a four. How the heck? That must be a two by Sudoku and that's a one. So 41 is the total of the seven snake cells in this box. So the two cells not on the snake are one and three. Now, does the central cell of any box with a seven or a six in it 
have to not be snake. Yeah, it definitely has to not be snake. If you're going to form, if you had the central cell of a box being snake, how could you get another five cells in? The snake's going to have to run into the cell from one direction and out from another. And you could get five in a multiplicity of ways, but you could never get a sixth cell without the snake branching or touching itself or something. So I think the central cell is always, in these sixes and sevens, is always not snake, which I'm going to make green. Now, that makes this a one or a three. The, the green in this box, the green cells are one and three. All the other cells are purple, which is my snake color. So that's purple, that's on the snake. I have a feeling that the corners all have to be purple. Yeah, otherwise, if you made a corner green, your snake would be touching itself like that. That would apply to any corner. So the corners are all purple. Now, does this snake have to run around there? So I was going to say definitely it does. But I'm not going to say that now. Because... Because this could be the head or tail. If that was a blank, sorry, if that was green, the snake could go like that. If that was green, that's what I was checking. If that was green, the snake could go like that and then carry on up here. So I can't fill these in, I don't think, these white cells. Now, what about this six? Or well, wherever the purple is here, it's going to have to run into the six box, isn't into into this bo into box eight. The snake surely, I don't know. It could end. No, I don't know. Um, what about the six number? Right, this is now made up. Okay, six is green, so that's one of the three green digits. Do you know the secret? I'm sure you do that. One to nine, and this is the ninth triangular number, which I claimed to know a moment ago. Um, one, every box adds up to 45. That's the, that's the relevance of the secret at the moment. And that's because it contains one to nine by rule, and they add up to 45. Now, that means, since we know that the purple cells in this box add up to 23, the three green ones add up to 22. Ah, and they are 6 and 7 and 9, because that's the only way of making 22, including a 6. So blue, sorry, 2 is purple. Seven and nine will be green, and the others will all be purple. Ah, oh, I don't know what it means. Come on, think. Okay, this six or seven can't begin with a one either. I'll do that for now. That's okay. That's not interesting. Never mind that. Ah, this pair of digits have to be at least two and three. So this is at least five now. But again, this is the number of... Oh, that's definitely green because the snake can't branch. This is going to be, it doesn't have to be green, but I think the maximum number here is seven. Again, you can't have eight. You can never have eight. We worked that out. This is five, six or seven. Can it be seven? No, because the center would be green. That would run around like this and that would form a circle. And the snake is not allowed to touch itself. So that's not a seven. This is five or six made up of two, three or two, four, since it can't have a one. So there's definitely a two there. This is the same number. 
because it's made up of the same digits. So those two cells are the same. Now, okay, five or six can't be 40 something. Five or six cells can't add up to 40 something. The maximum they can be is 39. So that is a two or a three. What next? What next indeed? Oh, I'm going to still have to think about this. I want it to be that shape, a C shape. Ooh, that's going to make this difficult because that would make that green. Now, these are the same. How could they both be sixes? Is there a way for that to work? I think. Oh, look, yeah, this snake. Could... Oh, no, that's no good. If it did that, having run round from here, then it couldn't enter this box again and get six cells and get out. It couldn't enter it at all and get out. It would have to stop in the box and it could not do that having taken six cells. Five would be the maximum. I'm not convinced that I have made these into fives, although I think it's incredibly likely. Um, how could they both be sixes? I, I don't think they could. I think that's the only way this one could. Or, or it could end in a tail there, but either way, you're running through those cells and blocking off this box. Yeah, there's no way to do it. I mean, you could do it if you were allowed two passes, but I think the snake only enters each box exactly once. So that's not, that's not relevant. There is no way to create a six here without making a wall up there, which makes this box impossible to be a six. So those are fives. There you go. I'm going with that. This is a 2-3 pair. You can write in the comments if my logic is wrong for some reason, if you can demonstrate a path of two sixes in those boxes, but I don't think there is one. There isn't, there just isn't. Right. So this is, could it be 32? Yes, it could in five cells. That's a 2-3 pair. Now, I'm still wondering if I can make both of these purple. Ah, I tell you what, this cell can't be green anymore. And that is because the two greens in this box are a 1-3 pair. And there's a 1 and a 3 in this column already. So that cannot be 1 or 3, and therefore that is purple. And now the snake does have a head or a tail in this bottom left corner. Because that's the only way to join this up in only seven cells. How interesting. Right. And, and I don't think that is possible anymore. Because how are you going to get six? Again, you've made a wall here. They would all be green. Yes, that is not possible. Although you could continue the snake. You couldn't make box eight work. Because all those four cells would be green. And we have to have six purples. So that is not purple. That's green. And one or three. That's purple. This is the beginning of the snake. That's gone green. This five's getting hard. That's gone green. Now the five's getting really hard. Right, let's get rid of the colouring. We don't need that anymore. Let's... I think those two both have to be purple. It's either a U-pentomino that way or an upside-down U-pentomino that way, which would be the other end of the snake. Now, is that possible? Oh, look, down here, those are green. Those are the remaining green digits. Those are nine and seven. These are all purple, and we have really begun the snake. Let's just call that the head. Um, right, and I've basically used this arrow and its clue totally now, and this one, because once one and three are green, the purples must add up to 41. Once nine, seven, and six are green, the purples here must add up to 23. That can't be purple because the snake would be touching itself. 
this is where it must continue because it started there it has to go to lots of boxes these are all green for the same sorts of reason ah the snake's tail i'm calling that the head the snake's tail is going to have to be in this box which has a circle oh i think it said it visited every box but it could never come in and go out of this without touching itself so it must finish in box nine right so now we know its path it must go from this box into this box into this one this one this one this one and down here ha ha so it comes out now we don't get a number in this box we get a number five here oh and i've decided those are definitely on the snake so it either goes up here yes that's probably what it does do it doesn't go like that because it would finish and it does go from box five to box four we've worked that out so those are purple that's purple ah oh, this is clever right i mean not by me i mean by andreas those are green these are all green now because it can't touch itself five has worked there we've got five to do here i think that means that the snake has to exit up here pretty sure that's right because to occupy five cells starting in row three column one this is like a bishop in chess every second move it makes after that is on the same bishop's color square so it's either there or there the second move and the one before it gets out of the box has to be the fifth cell that has to be there it can't be here now this could still be purple because it could come this way but it's not the exit point now we don't get a circle up here so i don't know what to do with that now need to think about the numbers right four and one i have a feeling 23 is going to be impossible now 23 there plus four and one would be oh it would be 28 that would leave nine and eight to make 45 so 23 is possible is 32 possible definitely plus four and one is 37 oh these two would add up to eight and they couldn't be one seven or five three but they could be six two that's weird this is either a six two combination in that order or a nine eight combination depending on whether this is 23 or 32. ah oh, this is so clever I'm beginning to love this puzzle dramatically right now what yeah it's interesting from thinking i had no clues i've suddenly used up these clues completely this one not quite but we're beginning to get there right two can't be in those cells because it's in one of those so two is definitely in one of those two cells doing a bit of sudoku just to while away the time <laughs> um this can't be more than five because the maximum number of purple cells here is five i reckon oh this is going to be six or seven ah it could be seven like that couldn't it look at that i bet it could easily be that or it could be six something like that oh rat heads um that's five or four by sudoku i don't think sudoku is the way to go yet i need to do more snaking um this is so tough this is so tough i mean i kind of think i've made brilliant deductions but i also feel i'm nowhere yet i've only got these two to fill in right what can that no that could be anything it could be three at the moment oh, it couldn't be three yes it no not quite but the reasons it couldn't be are not useful right this is a great start come on let's just keep thinking five goes through 
five cells that add up to either 32 or 23. Oh, one and two are in those cells, so that's a three. That is relatively simple Sudoku. Maybe I should have pencil marked them. I didn't like to do that across a box, but that's a huge mistake. Okay, well, just a slowness. Anyway, three there means that's now one, two, and four. That makes a seven up here. And again, we can fill in the corners as purple. Now this time it comes through that box and leaves it. So neither of these can be green or we would die in the corner and we have to die in this box or sorry get the tail into this box so those two are both purple that's what i'm concluding out of that and this can't be purple or this snake is snaking round and back into the same box and that's no good thanks to this green cell so that's purple that's green now these two Hang on, this has to be a four because the most they can add up to is seven. So the least the green cells add up to, the purple cells add up to is 38. So that's a four. Um, and these now add up to three. So the total of the purple cells, three from 45 is 42. So that's a two. Oh, that's beautiful. Right, this is purple to carry on the snake here. It either goes on those three cells or through that one, the snake. We've finished using that circle entirely now. Okay, snake carries on down here. Can't go there without touching itself, so it goes on here. Um, then it either goes there or there. Okay, I don't know what. Now, come on. Oh, it can't. that can't be purple or it would be touching itself naughtily. So that's green. That's purple. Now that's all joined up. Those are green. Oh, it doesn't tell me anything about box one but it's really filling in the snake part. Now. now, these can't be ones. Ah, here we go again. Here we go again. They have to be at least two and three. So that's at least five, but now it can't be six. You can't fill, in fact, that's green. You can't fill all these three, so that's a five. That is a two, three pair. In fact, we know the order. Oh, so the five cells this time add up to 32, not 23. 8 plus 24 in three other cells is 9, 8, and 7, isn't it? It is. And they come out through this cell. Again, the bishop's count does that. That's four cells and one of the other. That can't be 9, but it is 8 or 7. That can't be 7, it's 9 or 8. The other purple cell is 9 or 8. Have I got the maths right? 8 plus 24, yes, I have. So this is green so it's not nine eight or seven it's also not four one two three or five it is ergo a naked six that's not six and that's really oh actually i've known this for ages and i just didn't realize those have to be an eight nine pair because 23 is the sum of the purples so the greens add up to 22 i'd forgotten that deduction that's not a two now though so this is a two that was Sudoku or something. Um, three in the box goes there. The other pair are a six, seven pair. One, three, five. The, that is eight or nine. That is four or eight. This is four, eight or nine. It's a pity we don't get a total for box five or box two, but I'm sure we can cope without now. Four, one, two, three, six, five. That, ah, look, this sees one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's seven, eight, or nine, which is the other purple cell. And this becomes green four. And this is obviously one. We've also got a seven, eight, nine triple there. So that's five. Uh, that four fixes eight and nine in the center. These are four, six, and seven, but that can't be seven, this can't be six, that can't be four. Wow, this is brilliant. Right, that has become green. Now we don't know how far this goes. It could even stop there if this was a one. 
Well, in fact, this can't be two or three. And the maximum this can be is four. So this is one or four, I reckon. And the snake, I mean, I guess that's the only thing. I have a feeling if it was four, we could never disambiguate the actual snake. I'm not sure. And I'm not going to use uniqueness because we don't like to do that because it doesn't prove the puzzle's unique, obviously. Right, that is seven or nine by Sudoku. I've still got this five, which adds up to 23 to sort out, but let's keep doing Sudoku first because it's more helpful. Right, nine, two, seven, six, five and four in this box are a pair down here. Right, and that does make this a one, which was what I was expecting. So that's the end of the snake. So those are all green. So we've colored the head and tail of the snake, just its absolute middle section still to go up there. That one looks across here. So three and one are done. Then we get a one here by Sudoku. This is a three eight pair, they're done. Now that can't be two, so it's six or seven. Two goes there. One, two, three, six, eight. That is four, five or nine. It can't be four, sorry. Um, eight, two, nine, seven. One and three are a pair there. And this is a naked single now because it can't be five. That is six. And that is going to sort out all my pairs and triples in, this, in these three central columns. Almost all of them, not the one, three maybe. But look, the rest are done. Right, now that can't be two and that can't be two. Two in the bottom row goes there. The, in fact, that has to be a six. That's a seven. This can't be seven, so the seven in this box is here. We've got seven and six there. Now I'm just left with eight, nine pairs in rows four and six. Still haven't done this one, but might have more information now. Seven one three two six. Let's just keep going with Sudoku. Keep continuing to put off the moment of truth when I have to consider how to make up the total of twenty three. There. Okay. There's a six in one of those cells. There's a two definitely there. There's a three in one of those two cells as well. So it's a three six pair. Um. So this is four five eight as a triple. Three, six, two, nine, one, seven. That is four or eight. That's four, five or eight. I can't put this off much longer, can I? One, three, six, two, seven. That can't be eight. One, two, seven, two, nine. Oh no, hang on. I've got eight and seven in this row. Oh, now that could turn out to be useful. Um, let's think about this eight not doing anything in its columns. Yes, it is. It's putting a five in this final column. Three, six, that's four or nine. Um, okay, okay. Let's figure this one out now. Two and six. Okay, the, the total of the purples in this box is 23. So the total of the greens is 22. So if that was a six, the other two greens would be nine and five because they'd have to add up to 14. So if that was a six, that would be green and somehow three would be purple and that would break the snake. So that's not a six, that's a nine. And that looks actually quite helpful from a Sudoku point of view. Nine, four there. This is now a 5-8 pair, that's a 4, that's 8 or 9, um, 7, 5, 3, 9, 2, 6 is, def 6 is definitely here in fact, that's an eye wing, 3 there, that gives 1 and 3, oh yes, it's all coming now, might even, well I don't know, I'm going a bit far, but I was thinking I might be able to finish the grid in terms of numbers and then work out the snake afterwards but 
Again, that's postponing an arduous part of the task. Um, no, look, I'm down to this position. Now I have to work out the snake. Right, 11 there is part of the sum of 22 that is green. So the other two green cells add up to 11. They can't be 5 and 6 because that would block the purple. They, oh, that per, this 7 has become purple from that becoming green. So they are 7 and 4. 7 and... F no, hang on. 7... Sorry, the two greens are not 5 and 6. Now they're not 7 and 4. The two greens are 3 and 8, which has to be there. So that becomes an 8. The purple, that finishes the snake path. That becomes a 4. Let me just check the total there. 10, 15, 22, 23, which is the number on the arrow that has worked. Oh, that's a clever puzzle. 8, 5, 8. I mean, you do... I don't know what else you watch on YouTube, but I'm not sure you get to see somebody actually having epiphanies and deductions hit them right in the face as they look at an extraordinary puzzle like this. It is brilliant. Thank you, Andreas, for sending it. I have loved doing that. It's so clever. You have to see so many things about this three-part rule set and in, in the same order. What a snake. Anyway, that was fun. I um, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had a go at it if, uh, if you like what I definitely think of as the harder puzzles. I know I did somehow finish it within half an hour, but you know that's certainly on the harder end of the spectrum for the ones I do. Uh, great fun there and really enjoyed it. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, oh, don't forget, I have posted on Patreon a crossword today, the Extremely Hard Times Monthly Club Special. So if you're interested in the cryptic crossword content and particularly at the vicious end of the spectrum, have a look at that. In a couple of weeks, I will post a slightly easier puzzle. Um, but for now, that's up there. Very much hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.